Father, we acknowledge your presence and welcome you here today. Lord, we praise you for this event. We ask that you acknowledge and multiply the efforts that have gone into preparation for this event. Lord, we ask that you open our minds and inspire us as we go through the day's proceedings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Transportation has been described as the lifeline of a nation's development. It is literally the vehicle by which economic development is established and maintained. Transportation and the logistics of coordinating interconnectivity between the different modes, land, air, and sea, are not therefore to be viewed as necessarily economically viable projects in themselves but must be seen as the glue for economic activity and the platform upon which economically viable projects are built. Geospatial technologies must be at the forefront of our efforts as we seek to forge stronger partnerships between government, citizens, and the private sector in initiatives that will yield significant mutual benefits. In the past, we depended solely on static tables of data, reports that were derived from surveys and secondary sources to aid our decision making and strategic planning. This method served it, its purpose, but as we normally do in order to renew and transform, we had to re-examine our approach as there was a rapid demand for real-time information. With this movement to web and cloud-based computing and integration of real-time information via the Internet of Things, GIS has become a platform relevant to almost every human endeavor. It is now being called the nerve system of the planet. As our world faced problems from expanding population, loss of natural resources, and pollution, GIS will play an increasing important role in how we understand and address these issues to provide a means of communicating solutions using the common language of mapping. When I think of geospatial technologies for transportation, for public transportation in particular, I think of two main aspects. One, for the purpose of providing relevant, relevant information to the commuting public, and on the other side, providing or generating data that is important in making sensible planning decisions. Now, let's be real here. If you've taken the bus, there are certain natural questions that you're gonna ask. Like Carla said, when she was in Army, she was so, you know, what time is the bus coming? Where's it going? Where's the bus stop? What bus stop do I need to come off at? And after you come off, um, come off the bus stop, assuming it's not directly at your, um, your destination, where do you go from there? There's static GTFS, which is what we have now. And as, um, so it's scheduled information, it's what's supposed to happen. But, as, but listen, in real life, things happen. When you have a real time system, that's when you can, you, can, you can really pretty much bank on it. Then you know for a fact that when you say, well, okay, I want to get to, um, I want to get to Carib 5, uh, you know, by 5.15 to catch a movie, it can tell you definitively, leave at, um, leave at, um, leave at 4.15, go to that bus stop, and the bus is coming to get to the integrated approach as to how we manage these various modes of transport a number of technocrats with some policymakers need to get into a room for us to decide how we're going to be managing our engine of road through transportation with the various modes because it serves nobody's purpose that the various modes of transportation that we have end up competing with each other. They should be all integrated in one seamless manner. The universal GIS consists of the field aspect, I mean, in the field you have navigator, you have uh, workforce, you have survey one, two, three, collector, and a lot of us know about this. Um, we have GIS in the office. So what should we do next? First of all, let us learn the new technology. Let us adapt the, adapt the, the new partnership, explore new applications, share and collaborate 
encourage new users and uh, communicate your success. Google Transit platform that wanted to know if you have any plans to incorporate other public transportation. Google has, um, has a particular limitation in that um, the service has to be scheduled. So, um, so road taxis, because they're not particularly scheduled, um, Google Transit won't support them and um, the same would apply to the coaster buses as well. So I wanted to know if the JUTC has any strategic plan or vision to you know, improve the transportation system so that it becomes the preferred mode of transportation. In planning, there are, there are several factors that come together to make the, the plan work or the dream work. So if you don't have proper walkways for persons to walk when they get off the bus to get to their offices, you have a problem. Um, you could talk about persons with disabilities. If we don't have the ramps and we don't have you know, the things that are necessary for persons with disabilities to move around. We have a problem. And so when you implement a park and ride that cannot drop somebody directly to their office and walking from the bus stop or whichever location you drop them at, it's going to be such a challenge. People will prefer to drive their private vehicles rather than use public transportation. Are there fines for these trucks that are overloaded? Yes, they are, and they're, they're quite significant, but the, the main problem right now is enforcement. In your planning, what I notice is missing is your planning for public transport uh, to collect people. There are too many um, private cars being used for public transportation. They really don't have any collection point or terminal point, so to speak. So they make their, their own and it becomes a problem on the network. Welcome, Mr. Pengeli. We have one customer that services 4,000 outlets on the island, individual outlets. It's called Direct to Retail. Through an exercise where we mapped every one of those 4,000 outlets using GPS. In summary, um, we must know our customers before we can even start to think about technology. I find that the companies which are applying and implementing what we have talked about are predominantly large companies. Can I tell you that 80% of all businesses in the world are regarded or categorized as family owned businesses? In this country, my research showed that the revenue generated by family owned and women owned businesses are equivalent to approximately 32% of the GDP of this country. First of all, we need to know why it is that we need this intelligent public transportation system. The one problem that we have especially, our perceived problem based on the information that we all got this morning from the public transportation company, is that if you ask any Jamaican, one of the frustrations that they tend to have that they don't get enough information or timely information with regards to the location of buses. Now, uh, the solution to this, the overall solution is a GIS system. Data management and data sharing is one of the key principles or it's one of the key important parts of doing proper analysis without proper collection of 
high accuracy transport and logistics data such as traffic counts, uh, pedestrian counts, mapping road crash fatalities, also mapping transport lanes and bus routes, we won't be able to do high accuracy, high order um, processing.